Start. Our sins will catch up with us. Always. After years of waiting, it's finally here. Sultan Sacrifice, the sequel to Sultan Sanctuary, was just announced a few days ago, and whoo boy, would you look at that trailer. What's that? What's that? The heck is that? Needless to say, there's a lot to unpack here, so without wasting any time, let's get right to it. First off, the lore bits. We don't know much, but what we do know is that this is an extension of the world of Sultan Sanctuary, taking place in a new era in the lands of the Alterstone Kingdom. We play as a criminally condemned individual. We see our character seemingly trying to escape before his horse and rescuer are shot down, and we are left alone, hands bound, to fight this monstrosity. It ends well. Ah, <sighs> some things never change. Sometime later, we are resurrected by this individual here and offered a choice, return to the ranks of the dead, or enter a flux state between life and death, extending our time on this plane in exchange for a lifetime of service in the unending war against mages. Twisted, unredeemable creatures of elemental malice. This spellmarked service comes with the title of Marked Inquisitor. As a Marked Inquisitor, it is our job to hunt down mages. And when I say hunt, I mean hunt. According to the devs, mages roam the world, summoning minions and wrecking havoc. When we encounter them, it becomes a multi-stage pursuit. Imagine pursuing the Queen of Smiles through the village. She summons two rotten crossbowmen, retreats, stumbles right into the sodden knight, scraps it out with him for a bit, retreats again, summons a bronze knight, and launches a salvo of swords at you before retreating to her lair, where, cornered, desperate, and fierce, she awaits you for a final battle from which there is no escape. It's a chaotic dance of blades and bolts, swords and spells. So yeah, Monster Hunter meets Dark Souls. Shut up and take my money. But a spell marked can't operate alone. Before each excursion, we'll gather at the Pardoner's Vale, a hub filled with fellow Inquisitors, where we will presumably gather our supplies, upgrade our equipment, receive quests, and level up to prepare ourselves for the hunts to come. And don't forget, when times are at their darkest, it's important to have a friend to watch your back. We can now join multiplayer factions, similar to the creeds of old, such as the cooperation-focused Dawnlight of Order, or the player-killing Shroud Alliance. Unfortunately, that's all we really know as far as the world's lore is concerned. But that's not all the trailer had to offer. Let's dive deeper. First off, the starting classes. We've got several options here, and by taking it frame by frame, we can actually get an idea of what each build starts with. Unfortunately, we don't get to see the Assassin class, but we see everything else. All the classes have 15 ammunition and a dagger of some sort which appears to be the dagger we use as a method of coup de grace on the bosses, we'll talk about that later. Aside from the assassin, we've got the cleric, wielding a mace, crossbow, and mana pots, the fighter, who has an axe, shield, and a polearm of some sort, the duelist, who sports a rapier and a crossbow, the high blade, who has a katana and a bow, the paladin, who has a sword and board and a polearm, the ranger, who runs around with a spear and bow, and the sage, who has what appears to be a sword and staff combo, some mana pots, and a wand with some spell components? Hard to say on that one. On that note, let's look at a few spells we've seen so far. Lightning Storm looks like it's gotten quite the upgrade, and weapon buffs are definitely a thing, given the flame and lightning enchantments being applied here. There's also some sort of prayer buff happening here. I thought it was the Ray of Searing at first for a second there and got excited, but something tells me this is more of a defense buff. Flashfire got an upgrade as well, and now has a version where they launch three homing fireballs, which is pretty freaking neato. And there's also a parry for magic. Not sure if that's a spell per se, but it looks damn cool. As far as weapons go, we don't get to see too much. We have all the starter weapons on display, which look fantastic in action, but something tells me there's going to be a few other weapon types available hidden throughout the map. Oh, and if you were concerned about not being able to wombo combo your way through the maps, don't worry. Scythes are back. Yeah! Moving right along, let's get to the more nitty-gritty details that the diehards are curious about. Character stats. Gone is the skill tree, and in its place is a stat increase page that looks akin to Dark Souls. Keep in mind that this doesn't mean the skill tree is gone for good. The devs have hinted that there will be multiple skills and abilities for the player to learn, but haven't explained how those will be acquired. We'll have to wait for more information before we can elaborate on that one. As to the stat page, it looks different, but I promise it's mostly aesthetic. Leveling up works very similar to Salt and Sanctuary, so keep that in mind and you won't be overwhelmed. Just like Salt and Sanctuary, your HP increases a little bit with every level you get, no matter what you put into. But putting points into Vitality will increase your health faster. Endurance increases your carry weight. Strength, Dex, Arcana, and Conviction all likely increase your damage outputs in those respective fields, with Arcana being the new form of Intelligence and Conviction being the new version of Wisdom. 
Willpower is a bit different this time around, though. It still increases your stamina, but it looks like the two new stats, Resolve and Luck, have taken over Focus and Item Find increases, respectively. Side note, it looks like soft caps are absolutely still a thing. As you can see here, the sample character's health starts to go up in diminishing returns once they reach level 50. I'd hazard a guess that the soft caps are going to be about 50 for each stat, just like in Salt and Sanctuary, but that's the only bit of info I have to back that claim up so far, so we'll see. It also looks like we'll be coming back to the Partner's Veil to do all of our leveling up, considering the background and the giant obelisk. Speaking of Partner's Veil, let's go over the other bit of information we gleamed, which is the rune system. In the footage, the player has a set of runes, as well as a set list of runes needed to travel to a specific location. As they select the location and run past the basket, they drop the runes inside, triggering the portal and presumably teleporting there. The ins and outs of this system are still unknown, but we'll keep an eye out for more on how this is going to work in the future. Also in this scene, we see several tabs. I can only speculate that these are main quests, side quests, a bestiary of some sort, and perhaps a world tendency list like that of Demon Souls, but again, pure speculation. Let's move right along to mechanics. Wall jumping is back, as are traps. Hooray! But we've also seen a glimpse of a few new mechanics as well. First off, the grappling hook. Looks like world traversal is going to be even wilder this time around, with the player being able to latch onto distinct points in the world distinguished by sparkling points in the geography. I wonder if we can also use that as a weapon. No, lemon, stop, no challenge runs, just analysis. It also looks like when we defeat bosses, we don't just banish them to the shadow realm like before. Now, we just steal their hearts. Much more family friendly. I wonder if there's different knives that we'll be collecting that do different things. I only asked because it was shown on the starting equipment screen, which implies to me that it can change. Could be wrong on that one. But what I'm not wrong on is the fact that after you defeat a boss, a humanoid figure appears in their stead, with a gash where the heart should be. And it's not dead. There are definitely some lore implications there. Moving along to co-op mechanics, it sounds like we've got a complete overhaul of Salt and Sanctuary's original methods. This time around, we've been promised actual online co-op, as well as couch co-op to boot. Judging by the way the devs are talking about it, it sounds very similar to Dark Souls' Soapstones, where you can drop in, drop out, at will. They've also mentioned that any progress you make when playing co-op will be saved for both characters, which means that gone are the days of playing with a friend just to load your save and find yourself still sitting on the Shivering Shore. And what would a multiplayer game be without emotes? Well, good news, we'll never know, because Salt and Sacrifice has them. Hello! Aw oh, yeah, good game, my guy. And the last but most important mechanic of all, you can pet the cat. You can pet the cat. 10 out of 10! 11 out of 10! Cat out of 10! The only thing really left to go over is the enemy designs. I won't focus too hard on this, mainly because it would just be me pointing at each enemy design going, yeah, that's neat. Oh wow, look at that thing. Ooh, wow, can't wait to fight Spookums here. Suffice it to say, the enemy designs all look very inspired, and I can't wait to die repeatedly to every single one of them. And lastly, the one thing you all want to know, when can I play it, and how? Well, there's not a whole lot to go on right now. We know for a fact that it's scheduled to come out in the first quarter of 2022, and initially it'll be coming out on PS4 and PS5. Oh, wait, hold on, oh, stop oh, booing! Oh, Ow! Oh, Much like Salt and Sanctuary before it, the devs say they intend to expand to other platforms as well, with PC being officially confirmed and potentially being released in the first quarter of next year. And, considering how well Salt and Sanctuary did on things like the Switch, I would not be surprised if we hear about future console ports pretty soon. So with that all said, you better all start stashing your money away, because it's been announced that Salt and Sacrifice will cost $20- $20?! God, I love this series. And that's all we've got so far. Rest assured, I'll be following the development as closely as I can, and will update you all if we cross any new information about Salt and Sacrifice as it comes out. Until then, glow brightly, Saltborn.